Minecraft My Street, a series that I found sometime in 2016, and from that moment onwards I have been hooked. It has gone on to become my favourite series of all time, watching from Phoenix Drop High to Season 1, yes in that order, to Season 2, and then from that point on was waiting for every single other video to come out. That has been my life, but not just that. No, I have found podcasts, edited the wiki, taken part in roleplays, collaborated with subscribers, who are also of that same fan base community. Oh, and I've also written songs, forgot to mention that. But of course, most of all, I have theorised. In around July of 2016, I started compiling a script that I put off for about a year because I thought, nah, this isn't gonna work. It was in the back of my head for a long, long time. Up until about July of 2017, in fact, where I finally decided to update the script from its Season 2 primitive origins, include a couple of things, but stick mostly to the original idea that I had, for nothing had really changed. And I posted it. After editing, finding all the sources, I finally posted the video, starting thus the series of AFMA related videos that I continue to make to this day. I posted that video exactly one year ago, and it has since then garnered 12,645 views as I am recording this audio. A lot has happened in that time, and a lot of people have found me. All because of this one video. My channel has changed, and likely will not change again for even more years to come. And that video is, of course, The Truth About Travis. <laughs> The Truth About Travis was a video all about what happened to Travis, and what was in fact happening to Travis at the time of originally writing the script, which was around Season 2. People must have probably thought it was mostly applying to Season 4 because of the massive amounts of Who is the Snake-Eyed Man comments that I have gotten in that time, but no. This was mostly a Season 2 theory about why the characters, all except for Dante, and apparently Lawrence for a brief time, had forgotten who Travis was. If you don't want spoilers for the details of that theory, please go ahead and watch it, although chances are, if you found my channel, you already have. But it's been one full year, so how much of it still holds up to this day? Well, we're about to find out as I review the truth about Travis and see if it needs any updates one year later. As a comedic character, Travis is perfect. The way he's constantly getting beaten up by women, or at least was, the hitting on them in the most terrible fashion is hilarious to the viewer, even though it's technically abuse, so we shouldn't really be laughing at that. Whatever. Most of it is a comedy series, at least in part, even though it's been really, really sad recently. But throughout the My Streets, season one, he is perfectly portrayed as the goofy, flirtatious guy who pretty much fell in love with whichever girl he sets his eyes on, and then got beaten up by them. The initial description of Travis is obviously rather dated at this point, and it was, um, and it was about to be regardless because of what was happening in season four at the time of upload. Now Travis's description would be surrounded in even more mystery than before as to who is possessing him, which I do comment on in that video actually and what on earth is going on with his eyes, and is he gonna hurt Caitlyn? What are his true intentions? How much does he really know? So, Travis has become much more of a studied character than he was before, but Travis has become a lot more level-headed than he was originally. I do go on to say that he became a deranged creep or something to that effect, and that he had a passion for the ladies and a crush for Caitlyn, which of course has never changed, and probably never will, and I hope it doesn't because Travelling is my favourite ship of all time. 
it then goes on directly addressing Athmau and Travis on the very first page and the episodes that contradict themselves. Okay, so another change that has happened is that that part that I said had been taken out from the wiki has been put back. Or maybe I missed it at the time, I'm not sure. If I have missed it, that's pretty embarrassing because I in fact edited this page not too long ago. But it reads, One of the major inconsistencies is the Athmau and Travis friendship. Expand that to the entirety of their friendship, the, the entirety of Travis's relationship with people, except for Dante and possibly Lawrence. In The New Guy, Afmau and Travis are said to not have known each other, meeting for the first time in the episode. However, in a later episode, Her Best Friends, Travis remembers her and Afmau knowing each... Travis remembers her and Afmau knowing each other prior. Okay, well, I'm going to edit this. <laughs> attending the same high school and were good friends. In the prequel series, My Street Phoenix Job High, Afma and Travis is confirmed to have gone to the same high school and were pretty close. There's also a paragraph that says that apparently Zoe made an appearance in My Street, which is going to really mess with my second most popular theory, where I say that the ghost is possibly Zoe. Great. I'm going to have to look into that one, but all in due time. Well, honestly, people change a lot. I believe Aaron said there's 10 years between season one and Phoenix Drop High season one. I can't actually find where that was, but I believe that that was set, and it kind of makes sense. Well, it seems I was really onto something with the whole change of personality spiel from a year ago, because as I said before, that's exactly what we've seen happen. So thanks me from the past, I guess. He must also be aware of a lot of magical knowledge, since he has perfect access to it, even in high school. And he also mentions somewhere that his dad actually is a potions teacher of some sort. So the whole point about Travis's dad being a potions teacher of some sort... Yeah, that was right at the time, I assure you, because in one of the... In one of the side stories or something like that, not side stories, but you know what I mean. Travis did in fact say that, but even at the time I couldn't find that video, so I probably got no chance at finding it now. But either way, we need to retcon that because obviously Terry is here, who is clearly a businessman who has dabbled in potions before. Maybe it was his expertise that's from years of teaching that somehow inspired this. But for a while, Travis was really into potions, actually. <laughs> Eerily so. I wonder why... If, I wonder if that's why they decided to use him as the person to inspire the Ferrero Potions thing with the green eyes. I'm wondering what order they storyboarded those. It's curious, actually. I'm genuinely curious. But, much like the original Truth About Travis video, it's probably never going to get confirmed. So we're just going to have to wonder. He had a power. A power to manipulate memories. Around this time, he also discovered something else. He had fallen in love with the Lord's daughter. He wanted so desperately for her to admire him. But she didn't. Desperate, he hatched a plan to sneak into her bedroom at night and alter her memories. He was almost successful, but someone told on him. And he was caught, and by order of our lord, he was executed. You are hereby sentenced to execution. Your plot has been brought to attention by your own brother. What? By dawn, your sentence will be served. Now, see him out of my sight. After that, he, he came back. I don't know how he came back as a shadow knight. Killed the lord and his family. Then he wiped everyone's memories. Then he wiped everyone's memories. Can I just point out how rude that guy was, the judge in that video? Your plot hath been brought to attention by your own brother. Well, don't tell him that. But either way, at the time of writing the original script in 2016, Gene had only just come back. In fact, when I started the script, he hadn't appeared in season two yet. 
So the whole idea was that this other character that was only featured in Phoenix Drop High at the time would, for some reason, have wiped the memories because of this connection to Minecraft Diaries. And we know that the characters have connections to Minecraft Diaries, partly because they're technically the same people by laws of the universe, I mean ignoring different age boundaries that the characters in Minecraft Diaries would have, indicating, of course, that they're completely different people. That's the reason that Jean was originally selected for this theory, and then when I started actually investigating it, it made more and more sense. So that's the conclusion that I stuck with. Does it hold up today? Well, I think it does, because Jean having powers that have never been explained, if he does or he doesn't, we don't actually know that much about him, and he's kept away from the action. So once again, Gene's in a position where he's kept away from what's going on. So he's still okay to theorize about. <laughs> now that past me has mentioned that, it does in fact talk about this on the wiki in the paragraph below the one talking about Travis. So actually this has been pointed out as an inconsistency. But who knows? Can you imagine how amazing it would be if suddenly Gareth's jury form and Lawrence's shadow form came back into the story? That would just be amazing. We've already had Kawaii-chan fight someone for the first time since the big move, or since season one. Why can't we have this? This would be amazing. We could probably tie it into Forever Potions, or in fact, tie it into Diaries, because we still think the ghost has connections to Diaries. So why not? It still works. He said to me, I'm going to leave you to rot. No one here is going to remember you. Not even our mother or father. So now, you'll wander this world alone. Someone needs to remember. Now, obviously, he's not going to be that cruel in my street. But that explains why the only person who we know remembers Travis is Dante. And that is honestly my favourite part of this theory, I think. Because, again, going back to when I was writing the original script, that line is something I found on the wiki. I hadn't watched Minecraft Diaries at that point, another reason why I put off doing that video. Now I have, and I very obviously included in that video. So, again, it came full circle that way. And the whole point about remembering Travis and the only person being Dante, that's where the theory clicked for me. Now, on the subject of his arrival, we've already said that Travis is a quarter warlock, which explains his magical ability to survive the shock, fall, and explosion that meant his arrival when only one of those things would have otherwise been enough to kill him. I believe that comment about Travis surviving the house explosion is the reason I keep getting comments saying, HE'S A DEMON! Because I guess that if you power scale demons, then you can probably make a decent argument that he would be a lot stronger. Fun fact, some guy who apparently helps on the Seth the Programmer channel apparently found that video. So I don't know. <laughs> Imagine Seth the Programmer doing power scaling Afmal characters. Wouldn't really fit with the Goku theme, but whatever. Give it a try. Maybe I'll do it, actually. Ideas for another day. It's date. No, seriously, date. I, I think that's date. Half now. I don't know what this is, but like on the date. Floor. Ironically enough, the most dated thing in this video is apparently Moon Tea's appearance. I miss that channel. But yes, like I said, Travelin saved Travis. And possibly is about to get them into trouble again. But whatever. This was a year ago. Travelin saved Travis. It's still my favourite ship, okay? In fact, I'm sure that because of that ship, they are going to try and get on a ship, and get out of the island. Because that's currently the plan, apparently. At least I hope it is, anyway. Before someone comments, I know I said blue eyes and not grey eyes, that's been pointed out before, I'm sorry. Moving on. I stand severely corrected. As of the editing of this video, there's actually a comment on the latest My Street episode by a person called Kitten Cats, 
which says that maybe Travis is possessed by the other Zane as a forever person to try and block him out, but it's not working, and that's why he still has green eyes. Now, I don't know about the forever potion bit. I'm still a bit skeptical on that one. But the whole idea about being possessed by the other Zane, the spirit that Ghost was originally after, I'd love that because that would tie in a lot and that would solve the entire Ghost versus human Zane problem that we have going on right now. That would actually be absolutely brilliant. Although obviously a possession doesn't make your eyes go green. So I guess that's why the Freya Potion would be trying to block this ghost out. And maybe that's because because the ghost is still there. That's why the Freya Potion isn't everlasting, because the ghost actually has to exit Travis in order for the potion to become complete. I just convinced myself of an argument that I thought I'd had for a long time. You know what? That's actually my current theory right now. That's what I think has happened. Thank you so much, kitten cats. May your comment live on forevermore. Yeah. About the comments living on forevermore. As it turns out, it lived on for a while. Kitten cats, if you're watching, I'm sorry to your comments. I don't know if I believe that part anymore, because of what we've been shown. It is still possible that this other Zane that was mentioned, the ghost of Zane that lived hundreds of years ago, whenever Ghost was around, be it Minecraft Diaries, be it anywhere else, that ghost might still be controlling what's going on. That ghost might be the demon. That ghost might be controlling both Michael and Travis. And goodness knows whoever else. And Terry, I don't know. That's the thing. We still don't know at this point who is behind all of this. And until the end of season six, we shan't. That's not really what today's theory is about. But I suppose that it is still a possibility, but it's a less strong possibility than it once was. And that's a real shame, because I really love that idea. As otherwise, why was that saying even mentioned? And if enough people agree with me, I think, actually, I'm going to try and actually send this to Travis himself. Patrick M. Seymour. Probably don't know if he's ever going to see this. I don't know if anyone's ever going to see this, because I don't think many of um, my followers are AFMAL fans, and I don't... I take it back. The most dated thing in this video is when I say that most of my followers aren't Afmal fans. Because my sub count has quadrupled <laughs> since I made that video. In fact, it has gone beyond quadruple. So the fact that I said that my fans uh, weren't all Afmal fans, when three quarters of my current subscribers are probably Afmal fans, is just incorrect at this point. Well done past me. <laughs> uh, but even so, as for the sending this to Patrick M. Seymour, I forgot! I completely forgot to do that! I should have done that! Ah, uh, that was my way of getting the video exposure. And then it got exposure all by itself. What is my life? Well, that seems to be it for that video. So, very surprisingly, it holds up pretty much completely. And you know what? I think that's why it's so popular. Because it was written back before theories were starting to overtake Afmau because because of everything that's going on, all of these clues that fans are left to decipher leading to more clues because more theories keep on emerging. The script was done before that, in a time where every episode couldn't lead to a slight quandary of what's going on. Like, for example, we could we could comment now on what's going to happen to the characters because a lot of people have left Blue Jay Studios. Who's going to die, basically? But that will be confirmed or denied soon. This theory 
was on a long-standing plot hole that still has not been talked about. And this dates all the way back to the beginning of 2016, when this whole thing started to emerge. All of that time, and it was released a year later, you think it wouldn't do so well, but with mild updates and the fact that Travis had just become the, to the topic of talk once again, I think that's why the video did so well. It came out at just the right time to be relevant, and has just the right amount of ideas and evidence to back it up to be relatively timeless. It's not as simplistic as the Truth About Kawaii Chan video, and it's not as outlandish as the My Street Multiverse theory that also was made around the same time. It just does something right. And who knows, maybe sometime I'll stumble across another timeless theory like this. Maybe once season 6 completes. Maybe once My Street has finally come to an end. I don't know. Maybe this was a one-hit wonder and I'll never hit the same amount of popularity ever again. That's kind of depressing, but regardless, it still makes me so proud of this video that I thought wouldn't do well and went on to do better than I could ever have expected either at the time or right now. Every two months it would go up by a couple thousand views just out of nowhere. And it's still growing, even though it was made one year ago. That, to me, just makes me so proud to have been the person to make that video. And thankful to everyone who has watched that video and stuck around my channel and made it possible for me to do other Minecraft My Street theories and all these other things. My friend Beanie Boy said to me, So your first Aphmau video got 12,000 views and your next one hasn't even hit 2,000. That's true, but I still think that that first theory is the best that I've done. Maybe second to the My Street Multiverse, because I do really love that theory, and it didn't do as well as I hoped it would. But either way, the truth about Travis still paved in the path for it to actually get the views that it did. Was it just luck? Was it just as timeless as I think it is. Either way, I'm proud when I can say to someone, you might know me, I'm the guy who made the Truth About Travis video. And that's all I could hope for. On that note, until next time, farewell. My name is Afma. I'm new like you, and um, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> What's your name? Um, it's Travis. <laughs> No one knows what it's like to be the shy one, to be shunned upon. Me, I 